To be. To be? To be? To be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Or to take arms against a sea of troubles. And by opposing, end them. Of all the most frequently cited lines from Shakespeare, there are probably none quite as immediately recognizable or as commonly known as this one from Hamlet. But as cinema has progressed over the last century and the Bard's tale has been reworked, updated and reinterpreted by countless different directors, an interesting dilemma has arisen. How important is the original text when adapting Shakespeare? What do you read, my lord? Words, words, words. Adapting any literary source for the big screen almost always results in content being cut. In Laurence Olivier's 1948 Hamlet, the characters of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are removed entirely, as is the feared invasion led by Fortinbras. As well as reducing the length of the play, the longest in Shakespeare's oeuvre, these cuts allowed Olivier to focus more heavily on the psychological aspects of Hamlet himself. Alas, poor Yorick. The result is a looser approach to Shakespeare's original material, with lines being swapped between different characters to make up for the much smaller cast, including the film's famous closing lines, read by Horatio rather than Fortinbras. Let four captains bear Hamlet like a soldier to the stage. For he was likely, had he been put on, to have proved most royal. Compare this to Kenneth Branagh's 1996 adaptation, which fully realises an unabridged version of the play. No line of text or minor character is left on the cutting room floor, the result of which is a sprawling epic running at four hours. Although true to the play's original dialogue, Branagh updates the setting of the play to the 19th century. Transposing the drama to a decadent Victorian court, his Elsinore is the centre of a grandiose kingdom that leaves the audience in no doubt as to what Hamlet could acquire if he acts upon his murderous thoughts. Now might I do it, Pat. An epic torment worthy of its legendary status. But what happens when an adaptation alters the setting and dialogue completely? In Hamlet Goes Business, Aki Kurosmaki frames the same characters and plot of Hamlet inside a noir-infused stylization of corporate control within a rubber duck company. Although all the parallels of the key scenes are there, Shakespeare's languorous poetic language is stripped out almost entirely in favor of Kurosmaki's dark-humored minimalism. Even the iconic to be or not to be speech is not spared from the screenwriter's swathing cuts and is in fact completely absent from the film, as Karazmaki claimed it held up the action. Whether the changes are big or small to the dialogue or the setting, Shakespeare's prominent themes of power, deceit and romance, all of which are embodied in Hamlet, have proved to be timeless, regardless of their context. It is a testament to his perception of the everlasting plights of both societies and individuals that has inspired the reinterpretation of his work again and again in film, and will doubtless continue to do so for centuries to come.